Vale, eh, ¿os parece que, que empecemos? Vale, para esto no va. Bueno. Ok, so, well, let's start. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Jose Antonio Torres, and I am a PhD student inside the CAMS Investigation Center here in Silme. All my work is focused in the field of topology optimization techniques. And today I would like to present you some of my last research inside this field. Um, this is mainly based in my final master thesis, which I, do, I did last year. And this, uh, all this work has been transformed into a paper. And it has, it has been selected by my university as one of the best candidates to be presented in, uh, inside the context of the 19th Federal Student Conference. I don't know if you, if you have heard about this before, but basically Pegasus is a network of European universities uh, focused in the aerospace sector. And then next month, we will be presenting uh, the, this paper, which is called The Optimal Design of Structures considering 3D printing over hand constraints through an isotopic perimeter. <coughs> and this work, or this work has been supervised by Dr. Alex Farré and Dr. Fermín Otero. The outline of this presentation is as follows. We will start uh, speaking a little bit about the motivation and the main tools that we're going to use through topology optimization, IP manufacturing, and the perimeter functional. And then how we apply all these knowledge in <coughs> microstructural and structural topology optimization with perimeter and then the conclusions and the references. Okay, so let's uh, start um, talking a little, a little bit about the motivation. In the aerospace sector, it is a clear uh, challenge with this obtaining of a weighting structure in order to reduce the fuel consumption of aircraft and therefore to achieve a limitation in environmental impact and then increase the energy efficiency of, of aircraft. <coughs> so imagine that you, you have the, that a classical fuel of an aircraft which design is very traditional and since a lot, a lot of years ago, it has not changed. And it consists of some horizontal and vertical stiffeners, a disposition of stiffeners. And since this design is very classic, it is uh, for sure we can optimize this kind of design. So imagine you have some numerical tool that allows you to transform this original design into, for instance, this one, <coughs> where from horizontal or vertical stiffeners have been replaced, for instance, by diagonal ones thus optimizing the weight of the aircraft, fulfilling the same capabilities, meaning that the same configuration of boundary conditions and external forces. Then we're obtaining structures with low density to stiffness ratio, or um, structures <coughs> where weight optimization mainly have been obtained through material topology. Okay, and which is the numerical tool that allows us to obtain this kind of new designs? Where is topology optimization? So process optimization is a useful numerical tool uh, to design this kind of like, with structures. It is based in finite elements. And mainly, we have some <coughs> this uh, big domain D. You can understand D as a reference domain or background domain. And this could be the original or non-optimized structure with the corresponding boundary conditions and loads. And the idea is to remove um, progressively material, obtaining complex shapes and poles in such a way that the structure always remain as stiff as possible. <clears throat> um, well, here, it is very important to decide which is our design variable, and this is this chip here, uh, which is called the characteristic function. This characteristic function basically classifies at each point of this big domain T, if a material, if the point is a material point, which is inside this uh, subdomain omega, inside T, with, I will call this black point, okay? And the T is equal to zero if we are outside omega, but inside of D, which is a void point, void material point, which we will know as white uh, point. <laughs> so the purpose of the project optimization will be to find um, this characteristic function, this distribution of material inside D, such that some functional J is minimized, for instance, in the case of the structures that flexibility or the compliance or the internal energy, and also subject to some set of constraints. <clears throat> okay, 
Okay, but um, as you may think, we have defined a discrete design variable um, optimization problem since the characteristic function uh, just defines zeros or ones. So in the boundary of omega, uh, we, will, we have some discontinuities. And since optimization processes are based in gradient, uh, gradient methods, the derivative there is infinite. So we may have some incompatibilities. We must to think uh, another possibilities to our design variable. And usually this characteristic function T is replaced by two alternatives. The first one is density, which basically is a relaxation of our problem. <laughs> it is, uh, we uh, allow the operation of gray areas in the boundary of omega. Between 0 and 1, we have uh, continuous values, for instance, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, which is a, a gray scale. As you can see here in this picture, for instance, in a background between black and white values, we have some gray region. Then we must think also, OK, uh, in the black point, the uh, elastic properties are the young modulus of my material, whereas in the, in the white regions, the young modulus is equal to 0 or a very, very small value. But which is the elastic uh, properties in the gray regions? We will we will have to think about how to interpolate in these gray regions the properties. And one alternative is to use the same method, solid isotropic material with penalization, which is this <coughs> expression here, where we interpolate between two um, <coughs> elasticity metrics, C1 and C0, using this expression where the density is power to some exponent p, for instance, three, to penalize the properties in the in the gray region plus one minus density power to another exponent times C0. OK. So the density yields a continuous and a smooth um, <coughs> design variable, which is useful for optimization processes. Another approach is the level set. The level set is a, a surface function in the space, which is also continuous and smooth. And depending on its sign, it classifies directly a material into black or white. Um, like this. If the, if the level set in a space is negative, it is below the horizontal plane, then um, <laughs> the bond is related to black or one, is equal to one. And if the level set is positive, uh, it, it, we will talk about that white one. And in this case, uh, we, don't, we don't know how to interpolate elastic properties. And then basically, we'll take C1 to black points or C0 to four white points. OK, let's review a little bit the canonical formulation of, the, of our algorithm for, uh, for these problems. And imagine, in general, the most general case, you, you may have some functional j, which depends on the design variable x, for instance, a characteristic function, and also another primal variable y. For instance, you can imagine the displacements of the structure. <laughs> Subject to, for instance, a, a PD constraint. In this case, the PD, a times y equal to b, is, is expressed in its discretized form. For instance, you can imagine that the linear equation of a structure, k times u equal to s. If a is invertible, we can express this problem just in terms of the design variable x. And, and then we, don't, we, don't, we have only just to determine the, the characteristic function in our problem. OK. So in topological optimization, our main goal is to find the gradient of the cost conflict. It's very important. In, in this case, the gradient of j, which is depicted here in, in the, on the right, can be decomposed just in the gradient of j with respect to x plus the gradient of y times the gradient of y with respect to, to x. If the constraint is it's not a PDE, we may have just to compute the first term, but in general, it is decomposed in these two terms. So the algorithm is as follows. First of all, we have to compute the primal variable from the equilibrium equation, a times y equal to b. The second step uh, is to compute, which is called the adjoint variable, which is this P there in the step two, that basically helps us to obtain the second term of the gradient. Then we compute the gradient of J. And finally, <coughs> our algorithm is based in a Stephen-Dessen like algorithm where our, our design variable is, is, re is replaced on each point by the previous step plus some line search alpha times the gradient of J with a negative, meaning that we are decreasing it in the other rest. Here, the line search alpha is, is a small number, chosen such that the cost function is always um, decreasing until you find a local optimum point. <clears throat> OK, depending in our design variable density or level set, 
this algorithm is adapted to, to some optimizers, and not in the literature, for instance, projected gradient for density over the slurp and coming down in the for level set methods. And if you add a lot, a lot, a lot of more constraints, uh, um, we need complementary optimizer coupling and level set multipliers. Okay, so at this point, the motivation is to find a structure with low density material or with uh, complex shapes and folds. So we must think which manufacturing technique will allow us to obtain this kind of, of structures with an, an intuitive fold and complex shapes. And of course, nowadays, IP manufacturing is the technology that allows us to obtain these designs to reality. IP manufacturing is 3D CAD data printed technology with this geometry freedom of design with a reduced manufacturing time and it has an applicability in a large variety of sectors. And then if we are using IT manufacturing, we must think about <coughs> which are the requirements that we must fulfill in order to, to manufacture these kind of structures. And we, we can find two constraints that we must uh, fulfill. First of all, it's a length scale constraint. Basically, uh, our machine uh, will have some sensitivity in, in the material deposition. We cannot manufacture any any structure with internal valves with uh, um, any thickness, we need a minimum thickness constraint, and this is uh, called the length scale constraint. We need our optimizer to find structures with holes and internal bars such that it has a minimum thickness. And then, moreover, we must fulfill also the overhead constraint where these bars emerging from the optimization process cannot have an angle between the vertical axis, uh, being the vertical axis that printing direction. Uh, larger than 45 degrees. If you want to prevent the material to fall during this um, 3D printing process, or the apparition of small bulges in the wall of of your piece. So overall, <laughs> the aim of this study will be to provide a solution to design new structure with topological optimization techniques, but fulfilling these two additive manufacturing concepts. Okay. Um, prior to see how we are going to solve that, let me introduce to you the concept of perimeter. And that will help us to, to fulfill these two constraints. <clears throat> so the perimeter, given the distribution of the characteristic function in our domain D, it is this uh, omega domain inside D. The perimeter you can imagine right now as a black box, as a functional that given C, it computes for you the, the, omega, the boundary of omega. For instance, we can talk about relative or total perimeter, being relative perimeter as the sum of internal boundaries, these yellow uh, lines of omega being the, the separation between white and black values. Or also, you, you can also talk about total perimeter, which is not only these internal boundaries, but also the sum of the external boundaries here in red, the black points of omega, which uh, coincide with the boundary of D. So let's see uh, how are we going to compute these, these uh, boundaries. Fair to see, so I must uh, to introduce you also the concept of smoothing. Okay, imagine you have some characteristic function in general, a discontinuous function. Uh, we want to smooth our problem to, uh, to find some, in this case, we will call that regularized density, rho epsilon there. And such that this, this rho epsilon represents the Hilbert projection with minimum boundary conditions. Okay, basically, we will want to solve this minimization problem. Well, we want to find some density which is very similar to chi, solving this first term of the minimization problem, which is a, a kind of least squares problem. But we want this uh, similarity such that the, uh, we also have finite gradient in the boundaries, finalizing the gradient of the density, just a little quantity action square. So we will be basically smoothing the chi, the chi characteristic function. And in this case, we can represent this as, as <coughs> Finding some rho epsilon, which is inside the Hilbert space, and that's some functional J's minimized. Let's review a little bit how we solve this kind of, of problems numerically. An unconstrained minimization problem. Imagine, okay, we have some functional <coughs> uh, which has as input a function of real numbers and transform this also into a real number. Okay, this is. Um, relative hard problem, because if you remember from elemental calculus, if you have a real function that transforms real to reals, it is as easy as take the derivative and then equal to zero, set is equal to zero, but in this case, it's not that easy because now the independent variable is not anymore a real number, but it is a function. 
of real numbers. It is a distribution of, of values. So the tool that allows us to compute this result is which is known as the Gatou derivative tool, which in fact is a generalization of a directional derivative in space. You can imagine, for instance, this j as a paraboloid. If you want to find the minimum point, <coughs> you must find a distribution of the density such that any perturbation, rho hat times some tau, doesn't change the the operator we see a derivative equal to zero. Then independently of the direction, you are in a local minimum. You can understand this rho hat as a test function or a perturbation of your density um, design variable, where tau is a real number. So, which is called the variational forms obtained by setting the total derivative equal to zero for any um, <laughs> test function rho hat. Okay, so. Uh, introducing this, this tool, let's take the Gatot derivative of our previous minimization problem. We set this equal to zero. Now, let me to represent the design variable rho epsilon as a finite element function using shape functions n and the gradients of the shape functions. Then we replace this in, in our equation. We operate a little bit and we end up with this kind of matrix equation where this m is a mathematical analog of a mass matrix. It is not exactly a mass matrix because it, it doesn't have units of mass, but the structure is very similar to the computation of, of, of this mass matrix because we, we have um, two times as a function of first order. Um, K is a mathematical analog of a stiffness matrix, and F is a pseudo vortex. So what does this, this uh, matrix equation? Okay, imagine you have a, a determined chip, for instance, a square inclusion inside a square domain, as you can see here in the left picture. If you smooth uh, this domain uh, using this operator, you end with this, uh, this another distribution where you can see how in the internal boundaries, now you have obtained some gray area here. You have smoothed the, the, internal, the internal boundaries of, of this square. So how do we compute now the perimeter? Okay, using this expression here, where we're integrating in the domain, some quantity. But before explaining so, you may think that the perimeter is a sum of boundaries. So I was expected to do an integral of the boundary. <clears throat> because in fact, if you are summing in the boundary, you may integrate in the boundary. But why are we integrating in the domain instead of the boundary? Well, um, so process optimization is a technique that works uh, progressively. And you do not know in advance where the holes will be located. So it will be. It would be very complex to integrate in boundaries of holes where you do not know uh, where we there we are, we are we are, and so we integrate instead in a boundary in, in the whole domain, but using this interpret one minus this regularized density I have already found times the design variable g. Let's understand this operator. Imagine, for instance, g for the sake of simplicity is also a density, but the density design variable. This, this works both for both density and level set, but let's discuss for density, where you have one minus some density times some density. Here you have the plot of this integrant from zero to one. If you, if, if you have a density equal to zero, you are in a wide uh, value. The integral is not contributing because y minus zero times zero is zero. If you are in a black point, one minus one, zero times one, zero. But for intermediate values of the density, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, uh, the integral is contributing. And then this operator basically sums gray areas inside this domain D. This is why this is a kind of <coughs> estimation of the perimeter. And as we have integrated in the whole domain later, we will have to uh, divide by some characteristic length, in this case, to epsilon, where this epsilon is, for instance, the mesh size of your, of your mesh. So just a question. Yes. Epsilon is not the same epsilon. Yeah, it's the same epsilon as, as this one. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. It's the same. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, uh, we can also talk about the total perimeter, which can be understood as a Hilbert projection with Robin boundary conditions. And uh, the minimization problem is exactly the same as the previous one, but look that we have added a new integral analyzing the value of, of the unknown of the density in the boundaries. So we are looking that the original black values of the characteristic function in a boundary of P now become to a zero, and then we will obtain a gray distribution also there. 
if we uh, follow the same procedure as before, uh, we end up again with a matrix equation where a new matrix MB, which is a mathematical analog of a boundary mass matrix, uh, has appeared. Basically, what we obtain now with the same square inclusion is the same result as before, but you can see how in the external boundaries, in the big boundaries, you have also a grid distribution. So if you use, once again, the same internal definition for the perimeter, now you are summing not only the internal, but also the total perimeter. So the idea is that this um, isotopic or being as understanding isotopic as a standard perimeters, if we are able to analyze this in our topological optimization problem, we may avoid the operation of the small areas because analyzing the perimeter may kill these small length scales. This is the idea. Later, we will see if this works. But we can also talk about, which is know that the same relative and total, but an isotropic perimeter. Okay, what is this of an isotropic perimeter? Look, that the minimization problem are the same for this for both. But we have included inside the integral, which is penalized in the gradient, some directional matrix A. This matrix A basically changes the measurement metric of perimeter, or it is idea. Um, understanding the A, like, for instance, 10, 0, 0, 1. Then you are basically telling to, to our problem that some directions of, of your domain have preference in summing perimeter with respect to the perpendicular one. So you are changing the metric. You are giving more importance to specific directions. You, you uh, follow the same procedure. You end up with um, similar metrics equations where here a new, a new one appears or the previous stiffness matrix is replaced by this mathematical analog of an anisotropic stiffness matrix with this matrix A in the middle of the gradients of the shape functions. And you see now the result of the, the smoothing process of our, your characteristic function. Now you end up with the square, which only has smoothed the, the gradient in the direction I, I tell to the optimizer. In this case, the x direction. Have these gray areas just in the direction, so you are telling in which direction you want to to move, and then you are setting a preference direction to some perimeter. In theory, like then we will we'll see if it works again. And for the total perimeter, we'll take the same, but in the boundaries of the also gray regions. And the idea is that an isotopic perimeter may avoid the operation not only for the smallest scales, but also it may solve the overhanging constraint problem. Okay, prior to apply this, let me validate this perimeter functional in order to see if this works as expected. We will be now solving a pure minimum and isotropic relative perimeter problem. It is we want to find the distribution of our characteristic function G such that the just the perimeter is minimized. And subject to this is a volume constraint. We want that at the end, the volume, which is the integral of our G in D. Um, is equal to some target V star volume, in this case, 0 0.85. Um, we will continue with the same initial case and the square enclosure inside the square domain. And our question is, okay, which is the internal perimeter, the shape of this in, in, in square enclosure, such that the perimeter is minimized? We will be using two parameters inside the previous metric A. Metric A will be composed in, here in the middle, an expansion matrix, being the matrix that decides the preference direction or the intensity of one preference direction with respect to the other by changing this new angle, which is called the scaling angle. Here with this tangent function, you can decide which direction have more preference between each one. And later you can rotate this preference direction with some <coughs> rotation matrices using alpha, the rotation of topologies. So let's start, for instance, with no or the scaling angle which will equal to pi over four. Where in the expansion matrix, you recover the identity matrix. So you are recovering the quadrant isotropic or the standard perimeter. Since if you have the identity matrix and you rotate it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You are recovering the gradient of row square of, of your original problems. In this case, the result, the result is that your square is transformed into a circle. I mean, if it makes sense, since a square, I'm sorry, a circle is a geometry that a given amount, even uh, an amount of material, it minimizes the perimeter of the, of the boundary. It's the best candidate. Okay, let's see now, for instance, for the isotopic result for nu equal to 3 pi over 8, where in this case, the expansion matrix has 
a higher eigenvalue in the x direction with respect to the y, 2.41. And let's set alpha equal to zero, being meaning that we will set this high uh, eigenvalue in the x direction. Mm -hmm. In this case, you can see how the, the circle has been stretched in the x direction, obtaining now an ellipse, which major axis is located in this preference direction. And it, again, makes sense because now we are telling to the dimension that the perimeter has some preference direction to some to some values, in this case, the x direction, and it adapts the shape to the, this ellipse, which, which minimizes the perimeter in, in following this preferential direction. If we add also a pi over 4 in alpha, in alpha, then we obtain a semi ellipse but rotated pi over 4 radians counterclockwise with respect to the, the x axis. And then once again, um, it validates this, this operator. In this slide, you can see all possible cases. If as no tends to zero or pi over two, going up or going down, this circle tends to an ellipse, more and more eccentric until the ellipse um, it, it, it's converted into a perfect bar, as you can see in the, in the last row or the, or the first row. This is <laughs> the ideal case. And as you change alpha, that it doesn't seem there, but as you change alpha, the topology is also uh, are, uh, are rotating. Okay, alpha is the, the for each column is different alphas, but I, well, we cannot we cannot see the values, but it's rotating the ellipse uh, as alpha changes. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why I, this is. Yeah. Well, the you can like maximize there. I think. Um. Ah, there. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Sure. Uh, let's see if this disappears. Well, let's continue, and if this goes up, I will show you that fast. Okay, let's apply this um, tool that we have already uh, learned to the to our two main problems. The first one is a microstructural topology optimization with with perimeter. Microstructures deal with periodical disposition of unit cells in, in a space, and each of these unit cells have some orthotropic effective properties. Um, summarized as an uh, homogenized plasticity tensor C, satisfying this constitutive relationship in both notation. And the purpose of this optimization problem is to find a uh, given C to the minus one, which can be understood as the homogenized compliance matrix, um, which contribution of some um, elements of this matrix are minimized using these two vectors, alpha and beta. Let's see an example. If alpha is equal to one zero zero and beta is equal to one zero zero. You will be selecting the first row and first column of this C to the minus one, which is one over E one, the young modulus in the x direction. If you are minimizing this fraction, you are implicitly maximizing the young modulus in the x direction. So this is um, this is a way to decide which components of your tensor uh, you are minimizing in, in terms of elastic properties. In this table, you can see different cases or for bulk and shear using different values of alpha and beta. OK, and given this original problem now, we, would, we want to solve this same problem, but in such a way that the topologies obtained can be manufactured with uh, additive manufacturing techniques. So we will add in the functional some independence k of perimeter, being this k, for instance, 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, just a little dependence of perimeter. And then here we will apply the perimeter functional previously presented and subject to a volume constraint, in this case, 0 0.6. Okay, these are the results uh, obtained for different uh, different cases. Let's review a little bit each one. Uh, for instance, in, in regarding bulk one or shear, you can see comparing isotropic versus an isotropic, an isotropic total perimeter, how in general, no small length scales are appearing in, in these solutions. And how for bulk one, you're obtaining more vertical topologies, since we have set the preference in this vertical direction. Yes, uh, sorry, I forgot. And these are the variables I am using for these simulations, nu equal to 85 degrees and alpha equal to 90, since 90 is the direction of the 3D printing um, process. And then in a vertical direction, we'll be obtaining some preferential bars. And in the shear, you can see how in the vertical direction, the topologies or the bars have increased in thickness whereas in the horizontal ones have decreased, justifying again um, that we are <coughs> prioritizing the, this direction and then we're fulfilling overcoming constraints. 
The same goes from bulk two and shear bulk, where in general, in an isotopic case above all, no small length scales are appearing, and the topologies have been oriented mainly vertically, except in shear, but some, some ones are still in diagonals since we need this as like that in order to fulfill shear, well, the shear demand of our problem. But in general, the two constraints are fulfilled. Let's now move on the structural topology optimization with perimeter. Okay, you can imagine a structure, you can imagine as a structure submitted to a set of constraints and external forces. In this case, the purpose will be to reduce the volume of the structure continuously, always uh, keeping the internal energy minimum. And being the internal energy state, the external force vector time for displacement. And you can think about that because, okay, yeah, if I have some external force that produces a displacement, the product of this force and the displacement gives me some energy. The higher this energy, the more flexible the structure is. So by minimizing this displacement, given this external force, I'm implicitly again maximizing the stiffness. This is why this quantity in other contexts is also known as compliance, a compliance variable. So we are minimizing in function of T this compliance, but again, ensuring the manufacturability. So we will add also a dependence of perimeter, K times P. In this case, subject to a the equilibrium equation, a PD is a PD constraint problem. We, we must satisfy the K times U equal to F in discretized form and also with a volume constraint. And we will be discussing uh, three benchmarking cases the arch, uh, which is uh, the, number, uh, the first one, the bridge, and a density beam. Okay, regarding the arch, well, for these three cases, I will be using the same values, nu equal to 85 and alpha equal to 90. And okay, here are several several comments. First of all, we can compare relative versus total perimeter in any case. Remember, relative perimeter is a smoothing problem with Neumann model conditions. So basically, as the, what you can see is that the material um, distribution with respect to the boundary of the D domain ends with a 90 degrees angle with a perpendicular angle, whereas in the total perimeter, the boundaries are curved near the boundaries since here we have rubbing boundary conditions and then these circle shapes is the best way to minimize this, this perimeter. This is the main difference between relative and total in any case. Now, if you compare density versus levels, as you can see in general, how the results are not similar and it happens a lot in topology optimization, depending on the design variable, you may obtain different topologies. But now let's compare uh, or comparison of interest between which, which is isotropic versus an isotropic perimeter. Okay, for instance, in the case of density, for the isotropic perimeter, in general, no small length scales are appearing, but you can see how you have several bars. And in the case of an isotropic, the most horizontal ones have been severely penalized, disappearing for our solution, and the vertical one has increased in thickness. And then in general, the right one could be printed using 3D printing processes, but the first one may not. The most horizontal may fall during the, the printing process. So we are obtaining structures that can be manufactured with 3D printing <coughs> technologies. In the case of level set, for the isotropic ones, uh, we, obtain, uh, we, do not, we do not obtain several bars. It is very simple with any small length scale. So for the optimizer, it is a little bit complex to obtain uh, to solve an isotopic constraint. And what it does basically is to split the full art even into parts in order to build each one separately, fulfilling overhanging constraints uh, using this, this kind of thing. Okay. So for the bridge, sim uh, something similar happens. Again, density and level set in general are, are different um, solutions. For density, comparing an isotropic, uh, isotropic versus an isotropic for both. No small length scales are appearing, but for an isotopic perimeter, you can see how the bridge have been split or nearly split in two parts once again, uh, because it is complex to, um, to keep these horizontal beams. So the best uh, solution is to split the bridge in two parts for feeling overhanging constraint. And for level set, uh, you can see this, it is maybe very uh, more interesting. You can see how the horizontal beam here and the, at the base of the bridge have been eliminated in the isotopic case, 
And the diagonal bars have increased a little bit in thickness and nearly extended vertical. So once again, fulfilling over time constraint in the, in the vertical direction or the 3D printing and direction. Okay, and finally, this is a cantilever beam. This is a complex case since the bending uh, moment that generates this distribution of external force, this point load at the right, uh, makes it difficult for the optimizer to fulfill over the time in the vertical direction. Um, but well, in, in general, no smoothing scales are appearing, and you compare, for instance, an isotropic perimeter with density and an isotropic, you can see how vertical bars are appearing in, that, in, the, in the upper part of your, of your domain, fulfilling this preferential direction for, fulfill, for fulfilling overhanging constraint. And in the level set, for instance, in isotropy, you have some diagonal bars. And in this case, these diagonal bars have increased in thickness and have been nearly oriented vertically, again, fulfilling uh, overhanging constraint. So in general, let's move on to the conclusions. Regarding the design of high structures, the project optimization has been uh, a very useful tool. And regarding manufacturability, we can solve these two constraints. To, in order to solve the small scales constraint, we can use this isotropic perimeter functional. And regarding overhanging and also minimum length scales, you can use the anisotropic perimeter function. So this paper, this study has become relevant for exploration on newly building structures, and of course, further exploration will be remain will remain in the nonlinear regime in, in in my PhD thesis. Okay, these are the references used for for this presentation. And now, just as one last remark, I'm going to show you some videos of this uh, project, which I think is are very interesting. A uh, compliance problem, pure compliance problem without perimeter, then just with isotropic perimeter and uh, with an with an anisotropic perimeter. So let me just <coughs> prepare these videos. Okay. Okay, uh, in the left, you can see the compliance problem. It is uh, the original uh, problem of a Stuttgart approach optimization problem without any constraint. And then you can see how a lot of um, bars are appearing. And in general, now um, you have a small length scales, and then this is very complex to manufacture, the left, the left one. At the middle, and now it's, it's, it's working, you can see how the small length scales have disappeared. Okay, now it's, it's starting again. So by using a isotopic perimeter, basically the small, small length scales are killed, you, uh, obtaining a structure with higher length scales, but still not solving the overhanging phenomena. But with, in the case of an isotropic, I will stop here. Oh. In the case of, of the, okay, here. In the case of an isotropic oh, perimeter, okay. you can see how all internal topologies have disappeared, obtaining this, this cantilever, which is uh, weird, but uh, it, it is possible to manufacture with 3D printing technology, uh, avoiding this uh, overhanging issue. Okay, so just one last comment. Um, the value for the compliance, which is a flexibility for the first and second cases, you can see it's 2.05, 2.01, which are very similar. But the flexibility for the overhanging is 2.46. So we are losing a stiffness. And it makes sense because the more constraints you are adding, uh, you are demanding a, a, a most complex geometry. So you are losing more stiffness. You, you are fulfilling some constant, but you are, you are far from the optimal point of your plot. And OK, that's, that will be all. Thank you so much for your attention. And now you have any questions, please do not hesitate to, to ask. OK, so in the other cases, do you also have the comparison between the solution without any no, for the other ones, not just for the last, the last case. Yes, I did it a lot, a lot of yeah, a lot of time ago, and I now I don't, I don't have. Thanks. <clears throat> but in general, you can see that uh, the more constant you're adding, the solution is is a little bit worse, but you're fulfilling more more constant, of course, in general. <clears throat> 
in the cases you were not able so there was one case in which it was difficult to find the solution mm -hmm. yeah so that's here right yes. this one yes for uh, and the one above right this one yes so this, this one has more yeah here you still have more the scale maybe well um we can um upgrade because well we are in these last weeks we have been working in you know grading our optimizer because it was done uh, some time some time ago and well our optimizer maybe was a little bit immature but yes here you are fulfilling overhanging maybe this is more length scale is not is not fulfilled yet but well in general you you can repeat yet yeah, in ergotropic affective properties mean um, maximization it is sometimes complex because uh, you want to fulfill to still fulfill for instance in this case is shear uh, if you kill these bars maybe for the optimization it's complex it's complex to to fulfill the the orthotropic property uh, requirement so yes in some cases uh, maybe you are not able to obtain to solve all constraints so but well in general in general it, it works but yes for instance here also because here the minimum length scale is fulfilled but it is not vertical again for the shear requirement you want you want to to um, to have good shear and uh, you may have this this uh, horizontal uh, sorry diagonal disposition of, of arms hmm. <clears throat> any more questions yeah, uh, Alejandro here. Let me just transmit you a question that they, they put in the comments, okay? Okay. Uh, Mr. Villal, once he's asking, well, he's congratulating the, your nice work, okay? But okay. then is, could you please share your views on the computational performance of density-based and LS-based method? Do they take similar iterations to locate, to locate minimum? Oh, Thank you. Okay. Yes, um, in general, level set is it's more complex numerically than density because density is a, a relaxation of a specific function. So it works in the in the full domain at once uh, in doing this gradient method. So it is faster to obtain a, an optimized topology. But level set uses some optimizers as presented before, um, Slerp and Hamilton Jacobi, and these do not work directly on on the, all the domain um, at once but for instance as LERP basically uses a tool which is known as topo um, topological derivative where basically it's an operator that inserting an infinitesimal hole in some point of the domain it tells you how your cost function changes and then you must decide where to put a hole uh, in a specific point, you are not working in all the points at, at once, just you are iterating in which point and you locate this hole in order to minimize my cost function. So it is slower for the optimizer to achieve a, 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 local, a local optimum point. And for instance, Hamilton Jacobi uh, basically takes this post and, and discuss what happens if you increase the, the, the size of these existing, existing holes. And then you are again not working on other domain, but just in the existing hole, you are looking at, okay, if I increase this hole, let's see what happens. So it is slower because you are you are testing holes, what happens if you increase the, the, the size of the holes and then you're minimizing your cost function. So yes, level set are in general slower than density and density is faster because of the fact that you are working with a continuous um, design variable, which is on, the, on your domain. But level set is, um, is a surface, so you are not acting directly in your design variable T, but implicitly with this hole. So density, in a, in a short answer, density is faster than, than level set. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. I suppose that, that answers that question. I only have the, one curiosity on my own. Uh, how much does it take to run one of those cases uh, on average? And, and this tool is implemented in MATLAB or, I mean, in a... Yes, okay. Yes, uh, all this work uh, now is in MATLAB. Uh, we have a GitHub repository code and it, it works with MATLAB. We, it is called this one. Um, okay, uh, the computational time depends on, on the requirements. The, com the pure compliance problem, um, with a fine, um, a good mesh may take maybe 20 minutes or well, less than one hour, but 
as you are an ali or an isotopic perimeter or an isotopic perimeter you want to obtain a good result um the problem may uh, may be about three hours maybe four hours to compute the, the solution so it depends on the functional but for the complete solution solving minimum length scales and overhanging approximately is between three and four hours for for two dimensional problems of course we have this tool in 2d but we expect to move now in 3d and of course in 3d it may it is more expensive and then maybe the computational time is even higher but now we are working in in optimizing this computational time in, in 2d and then we will do this jump to, to 3d but as a short answer it's with a complete problem is between three and, and four four hours <clears throat> perfect thank you. Okay, thank you well i don't know if there are not further questions maybe we can close the session and well you can leave your contact just in case uh, anyone is interested in or wants uh, more information Okay. In any case, uh, thank you very much for participating in the in the coffee the coffee talks. And well, hopefully we'll see you again in the future. Okay. Thank you so much for the organization. And yes, let's hope to see you all of you in the in the future with new uh, updates of this of this numerical technique. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.